other than Taylor Cole, Luis Garcia, the bullpen is just pretty solid this year. Buttry's been great. Hansel Robles been great. Bedrosian's been great. Um, uh, missing a person. Why? I'm really forgetting his name right now. Noe Ramirez. He's been solid. He's been, he's been having a good year. Um, the bullpen has definitely been good this year. Um, Matt Harvey, Trevor Cahill are both still injured. Um, I hope they don't come back. I mean, every time they step on the mound, it's pretty much a guaranteed loss. <clears throat> um, they're just, they're definitely not good. I mean, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. I don't know when Osmus or Billy Appler will just figure out when, I don't know when they're going to figure out that Harvey and Cahill are just not good. I mean, they already wasted, I mean, they both are getting paid $10 million this year. That's $20 million. They You could have used that money to get Keiko or Kimbrell. I mean, it's hard to think about, but that's, Billy Apple's done so many good things. Uh, prospects got in Tom Vestel a good win, but what the pitching, Harvey getting Harvey and Cahill, and um, Cody Allen have just been really bad decisions. Um, but looking up at the pitching, uh, Griffin Canning and Jose Suarez, uh, two big pitching prospects have been so good. The starting pitching for the future is just going to be really good. I think right now the starting five. Pitchers are Andrew Heaney, Tyler Skaggs, Felix Pena, Jose Suarez, and Griffin Canning, which is just solid. And I believe that the Angels are going to try to get an ace after this offseason, which is just going to make the starting pitching really, really good. I think Garrett Cole is the main uh, target. Uh, that would just be so good to get Garrett Cole. Um, let's look at this next week. Since we just talked about how the Angels had such a bad, or bad, what? <laughs> had such a good last week. Hopefully they can take the momentum and take it against the Blue Jays in a four-game series. Uh, the Blue Jays are just having a really bad year. Edwin Jackson is pitching tomorrow. He has a 10 ERA so far this year. Hasn't done good. Um, I'm honestly rooting for him to do good. I hope he does good enough that other teams will want him and he'll play on more than 14 teams. You guys know um this... Guys, nobody's played on more MLB teams than Edwin Jackson. He's on his 14th MLB team. 14, that's literally almost half the teams. Um, I, I mean, I hope he does bad tomorrow, or today actually, um, later today, because it's already like 3 a.m., it's Monday. But I hope he had the bad start versus the Angels. But I hope after that he does. he starts doing good again. Um, but yeah, the 10 ERA, it, the Angels should... Offense should go off. Let's. I'm. I'm excited to watch Justin Upton, um, have his debut this year or a 2019 debut. Um, it's a good pitcher to have it off of a struggling pitcher. Um, after the four game series, the Angels play the Cardinals for I believe three games. Um, the Cardinals are a couple games over 500, so they are a pretty solid team. Hopefully, the Angels can have an edge though. Um, and then after that, that's pretty much the whole week, six or seven games, actually. After that, the Angels go back home to play the Reds for a couple games. That should be an easy break. But Blue Jay and the Cardinals is combined. It's a, it's a pretty easy week. Judging the way the Angels played last week, which is great, hopefully they can take it and do good this week. Um, this brings me to say, you should, you guys, if you're Angels fan, you should listen to my podcast every Sunday because I give a good summary. I try to give a good summary of like how the Angels do every week. Um, so yeah, I mean, stay tuned next Sunday. We'll see how that. I'll give a summary of this next week versus the um, the Blue Jays and Cardinals. Hopefully, it can be. Hopefully, the Angels can rack up a lot of wins and get over five hundred. Angels just haven't figured out how to get over five hundred. Actually, in games that they are under one game under five hundred. They're 0 and 7. 0 and 7 game in games that they could get to 500. It's almost like it's a curse or something. But I believe this is going to be the week that they do it. It has to be, especially against the Blue Jays. Um, and yeah, we're getting towards um, the midway point of the year. 
I think the playoff race is starting going to get more and more and more interesting. And the Angels are definitely not out of it. They're only 3.5 games behind the wild card. 3.5 games. This The AL is not like last year. Last year, teams got to 90 wins and they still didn't make the playoffs. But that's not like most years. Most years, it's going to be like this year where... You can only be a few games over five hundred, and you can probably make the second wild card spot. Um, the The Red Sox and Indians, it's gonna be tough. I believe it's gonna be down to the Red Sox, Indians, Rays, and Angels. Those four teams for wild card spots. It's hard to see the Red Sox and Indians doing bad all year. They're only a few games over five hundred. They're probably gonna get better, but you never know. They could stay like this. If they do, then the Angels have a really good shot at the wild card. I would say, I mean, I would say it's a good 50-50 the Angels get the wild card spot. Um, I don't think they're at championship potential because the pitching is not there yet. But they definitely will soon. Pitching prospects, like I said, uh, Jose Suarez, uh, Griffin Canning are just great. And the Angels are looking to get another ace. And then the bullpen is just... Bullpen's even great. Um, the bullpen, I mean, a championship team, like, we could keep this bullpen. Maybe get one more big closer, something like that. But the bullpen's definitely solid. Um, but, yeah, the Angels, 3.5 games upon the wild card. Um, if you guys should stay, um, if I know it's still early to look at the playoff race, but you guys should be checking into that because... It's going to get more and more interesting. Um, I mean, the season's already getting close to halfway over, so the playoff race will be more and more interesting. And I'm starting to take it more and more seriously, looking at the wild card and seeing where we're at. Uh, still two games under five hundred, but you really shouldn't look at the record. Uh, the, I think the Angels have been doing good this year, um, showing that they're good. I mean, in terms of winning games, haven't been great with that. Lost a lot of games that should have win. But um, uh, just to sum it up, I think the Angels, the way they're playing does not reflect their record at all. Um, well, I think I think every fan of any team would say that. So I don't know how good. That's kind of um, the summary. Uh, that's not a good way to uh, sum up the pod- the podcast. It's only been twenty two minutes. Um, I need I need more to talk about. <clears throat> um, I why not we uh talk about the rest of the league? I wonder. Um, you know I've been watching and looking at so much, or paying attention to so much Angels baseball. I've kind of forgot about uh the rest of the league. Or happy late Father's Day. It is Monday. It's technically not Father's Day, but um, Father's Day. Well, I don't know. I keep I keep losing my like train of thought. Um, well, I let's just why don't we look at scores around the league? Oh yeah, Padres, uh, Rockies, Padres won fourteen thirteen. I heard in a post or something I read that this series Padres Rockies was the most high scoring series ever. I mean that just shows you that hitting's getting more and more. Hitting just getting better. I mean look at the scores today. Hold on. I mean, Padres, Rockies, 14-13. Yankees scored 10 runs today. Blue Jays scored 12 runs against the Astros. Whoa, Blue Jays won 12-0 against the Astros. Well, that's good and bad. I mean, it's good that they killed the Astros, but we're going to be facing them. Hopefully, we're not facing them while they're hot. Uh, the Nationals scored 15 runs. The Braves scored 15 runs. These are... What are these scores? These scores are crazy. The... The Reds scored 11 runs. The Indians scored 8. Red Sox scored 8. Everyone scored a ton today. What is going on there? That is actually pretty crazy. Okay. Oh, yeah. 92 combined runs. Most runs in a four-game series ever. 92 combined runs. Um, that is pretty crazy. Um, let's take a look at the standings. What I don't really look at is NL standings too much. Um, Braves have been doing great. Braves past the Phillies. Uh, I hate the Phillies. I hope they don't do good because 
all the Phillies fans thought they were getting Trout, and Trout didn't even give them a thought, which is good. Braves, Braves winning NL East. Uh, Brewers winning NL Central right now. The Cardinals, I really thought the Cardinals would be doing better. Only a couple games over five hundred. Uh, Dodgers, just unbelievable. I think they have the best team in the MLB. I mean, Ryu, they have the best pitchers so far this year. And one of the best hitters so far. Not the best. Cody Bellinger, he's been pretty amazing. But he's probably not the best hitter this year. I think, I'm not even sure. You kind of have to check the stats on this. But I think Christian Yelich has been better this year. Christian Yelich has been amazing. Uh, someone else has been amazing, though, is Mike Trout. Mike Trout is probably on pace for another MVP season. There's no one really even close to Trout this year. I mean, it's funny because every year people think someone's as good as Trout. Last year is Mookie Betts. Um, and then obviously you can see that he's not. There's always this one player that has one really good year and everyone goes out and says like, oh yeah, they're as good as Trout. Uh, they said that about Miggy. I remember even Donaldson. Well, not Donaldson. I didn't think. I don't think people thought he was that good. Trust should have won MVP that year too. I think it was twenty fifteen. That the only reason Donaldson won was because like they made the playoffs or whatever. Um, respect to that. Donaldson still had a great season, but uh, you know whatever. I'm I, I I'm getting off topic. I I need I need random stuff to talk about. We. I, we need to make this podcast at least 30 minutes long. Um, the Twins winning their division. They have the best record in baseball still. When I when I saw that earlier this season, I I thought that it wouldn't last at all. But now we're getting towards like the halfway point. They still have one of the best records, which is pretty surprising. I didn't think that they'd still have this good of a record. The Yankees, even with their injuries, the Yankees are such a powerhouse. Um... My prediction for most likely World Series matchup is Yankees-Dodgers because those two teams are just insane. The Yankees have a 614 win percentage, even with all their injuries. Like, Aaron Judge and Stanton aren't even back, which is kind of crazy to think about how good they are. Um, there's a lot of super teams becoming the NBA. A lot of super teams. Yankees-Dodgers are just unbelievable. Uh, I mean, the Astros, too. People forgot how good the Astros are doing. Uh, Angel, I mean, there's no chance for any other team in the AL West. And the Astros have a 667 win percentage, almost as good as the Twins. The same win percentage as the Dodgers. They're both 48 and 24. Um, just, I think it's going to be the Yankees, Astros, and Dodgers, which are going to be the teams to beat. They're all just pretty amazing. And then also, guys, Encarnacion to the Yankees. Jared Apoto is just awful. If you guys don't know, he was a former Angels GM. Same guy that got Albert Pujols' awful contract. Signed him to that awful contract. Signed Hamilton to that horrible contract. And now he's tearing apart the Mariners. Not even like a rebuilding way. Not even like wanting to win way. Because their young, best one of the best clothes in baseball... Edwin Diaz traded him for literally no reason. He like led the league in slate saves uh, last year. Um, no reason to trade him. And now Jerry Depoto is tearing apart the whole team. Traded Cano and Carnacion. I heard rumors of him trying to trade like D Gordon Beckham and Domingo Santana. I think his name too. I he's literally just takes teams and tears them apart. I don't know why the Mariners think he's good to sign him as their GM. Jerry DePoto is just so bad. I mean, he's so awful. It's kind of funny. Um, are we at? Oh, we got a minute left. Okay. And speaking of awful, let's look at the awful teams this year. Uh, not trying to make fun of them or anything, because I know teams have plans of rebuilding. Uh, Baltimore. There's a lot of teams... Baltimore and Miami could have record-breaking breaking low seasons. The Orioles, just like last year, their win percentage is under 300. 296 win percentage. Um, it, it does kind of, I hope it doesn't unbalance balance the AL like it did last year. That single-handedly, the Orioles single-handedly unbalanced the AL last year. 
Um, the AL Central, the White Sox, Tigers, Royals, bad as always. Um, Mariners doing pretty bad. Mar